It's summertime, funner time, but it's still frugal time. Summer is a season of fun, rest, relaxation, but it can also be a time when those bills tend to mount up. If you don't know us, I'm Larry. And I'm Hope. And we're from Under the Median, where every week we bring you videos on practical frugality. Yes, you can still have fun. It's not about deprivation, but it will keep your wallet happy. Embrace outdoor activities. Now, things like special festivals, concerts, uh, amusement parks, those costs can add up quickly. But once again, we'll remind you that frugality is not deprivation. So if you plan on doing some of those things this summer, that is okay. But what we want to remind you is you wanna plan ahead for them and you wanna make sure you save up enough money to pay for them. But we also have some really quick ways that you can actually save on them if that's what you plan to do. Sometimes that reduced entrance fee that can be found on weekdays because they know that weekends are gonna be really filled for them and really busy, but they wanna maybe on a Tuesday night drive some traffic to their attraction. You might also find reduced admission prices after a certain time of night, usually like seven or eight o'clock at night, you're gonna get in for less money than you would during the day. Sometimes they have free kid days mm -hmm. offered, so you can get your children in mm -hmm. for free. And another good freebie is senior citizen discount days. And then finally, you can often find tickets for events in your area at a discounted price through Groupon. Now, when you go to Groupon, you wanna be aware of a couple of things. Sometimes the dates that you can use that coupon or that certificate Sometimes those dates are limited, and sometimes the number of tickets that are available through Groupon are also limited. But check out Groupon and you might find exactly what you want at a price you can afford. Here are some fun, free family activities mm -hmm. you can do in the summertime. One of the things that some places offer are free swimming days. Mm -hmm. Now, I used to go to a lake. It was about 40 miles from here but it was totally free swimming. It made the drive worth it. We'd make it a picnic day as well. Mm -hmm. Very fun. Some swimming pools offer maybe an hour a day where it's mm -hmm. free swimming. So there's another way to save some money. Another outdoor activity that doesn't cost anything is hiking. And it's good for you to get out, get some fresh air, and take a nice long walk with your family or your friend or spouse. Very good thing to do during these months. One thing you might want to take into consideration, especially if you have to drive a distance to get some of to some of these attractions, pack a picnic lunch and yes. take it with you. A lot of these places will have designated picnic areas that yes. you can picnic at once you get there. Of course, an activity that I enjoy is biking. In fact, I went for about a five-hour bike ride this last weekend. I rode 61 miles. And while Larry is biking, I am speed walking because that's <laughs> definitely more at my alley than biking. And I walk oftentimes three to four miles every single day in the summer than I can. Yeah, I hope and Dan do a lot of walking together. Dan's got kind of her walking partner. Second way that you can save money this summer is to plan a stay now, this does not have to be boring, y'all, all right? We're going to lay some ideas on you for the perfect staycation. You might have some museums right in your mm -hmm. area, in your hometown, or maybe very close by that you can visit. One of our local parks offers mm -hmm. a free band concert mm -hmm. on Sunday nights. It's, it's our local municipal band, mm -hmm. and they get quite an attendance. And this is a good band. I mean, these are professional artists in our local area. Very fun, and it's free to attend. Our local park district also often has free movie nights where they will project the movie up on a huge screen. You go, you take the kids, you take your popcorn, you take your soda, and you know the kids get tired halfway through the movie, they lay down on the blanket, they miss the last 45 minutes, but it is an experience for the family to attend together. <laughs> Staycations do allow you the opportunity to unwind without the expense of several travel days in a row. And staycations are actually one of the 10 ways that we radically reduced our expenses when we were saving for our great big goal of saving cash for this house. If you want to know what the other nine ways are that we reduced our expenses, then you want to request a copy of our free ebook, 10 Ways to Radically Reduce Your Expenses, because in that ebook, I go through step-by-step -step instructions for all 10 of the ways we reduced our expenses. I give you checklists 
And I give you a whole lot of information in that ebook on how to plan the perfect staycation for your family. So request that free ebook, 10 Ways to Radically Reduce Your Expenses. I'll make sure there's a link in the description of the video. I'd like to just add one more thing about staycations. Mm -hmm. Staycations doesn't mean you just stay home. It doesn't oh, yeah. mean that you're homebound. You can find places within a radius of, let's say, a one or two hour drive from your house mm -hmm. that are very interesting to visit. We have found so many places around our state that are fun and free and that the family really enjoyed. Our third strategy, let's delve a little bit more deeply into how to utilize those low cost or free community events. Whether it's a concert or an outdoor movie screening or even a great art festival, <laughs> there are some really specific places that you can look to try to find these events. Facebook is a really good source mm -hmm. for locating a lot of these. You might check your city's mm -hmm. Facebook page or mm -hmm. even maybe their home web page. Mm -hmm. They might have events listed that are free or even very low cost. Another thing, there might be a community bulletin board. Also, some colleges and universities have bulletin boards mm -hmm. where they have listings of events that are going to be taking place there or around that area. And once again, they also have web pages mm -hmm. that you can look into. And finally, your local library is another good mm -hmm. resource to check. And you also can just Google free fun things to do in my area and you'll come up with just different places that you can go that and you can narrow it down to specific dates that you're looking at and that's also helpful to do i think once you get the ball rolling mm -hmm. you're going to yeah. find that there's more places to visit in your surrounding area mm -hmm. than you have time for Here's something important when it comes to frugality that Hope and I do, and maybe this isn't quite as exciting as going to local <laughs> events, but we do a review of our budget and we look over and set goals for the future. Now, when it comes to setting goals, there is one place that has been so incredibly and integral to our ability to set goals, and that is Creekmer Wealth Advisors. They're the sponsor for this video. John Creekmer and the team at Creekmer Wealth have been our personal financial advisors for many years. It was John Creekmer who was responsible for helping us to see the possibilities that existed in our income, in our budget that we honestly did not recognize until we stepped foot into his office. He helped us to set up spending patterns which allowed Larry to retire at the end of 2022. Now, if you have some specific questions and you live in the United States, guys, you have questions about budgeting or setting your goals, or perhaps retirement or investment, John and the team at Creekmer Wealth would be really happy to field those questions for you. You will find a link to Creekmer Wealth Advisors all the way at the top of the description of this video. And we really thank Creekmer Wealth Advisors for sponsoring the video. And while you're in the review mode, <laughs> review your subscriptions. Now, Hope and I have mentioned this on past videos, mm -hmm. but it's important to take a look, kind of an inventory, so to speak, of all of the things that you're signed up for. Mm -hmm. Are you utilizing them? Are you getting the good out of them? If you're on Amazon Prime, are you getting the good mm -hmm. out of that service? Is it worth it? If you have cable, are you getting the good out of it? Is it necessary? Could you live without it? Take a look at all your subscriptions and see what you might do to eliminate some of those. Here's something else that you can do that is immediately going to help you save more money over the summer, and that is cook at home. Cooking at home, it can be done in such a way that you don't overheat the inside of your house at the same time. Certainly with the advent of crock pots and instapots, there's ways to cook without heating up your home. So these work good. They don't use a lot of energy. And that's a great way to kind of gear off of the idea of we can't cook because we're going to heat the home up. And you know, we've it's, it's interesting because we've looked at how much energy even that appliances use to to cook items. We did a video where we tested mm -hmm. four different electric appliances. We tested the electric oven, the toaster oven, the crock pot, and the instant pot cooking a squash to see how much energy each of them used. Now the instant pot won Absolutely. by a landslide in, in that. And I think a lot of people were surprised by that and they said, oh, I shouldn't use my crock pot. No, th there's a lot of different factors that go into how much energy each item uses. And if you have a smaller crock pot, you're using it on low, for instance, 
you're going to use less energy than I did in that video. So the long and short of it is you need a kilowatt meter, my friend, because that kilowatt meter, we've, we've like preached the love of kilowatt meter so many times on this channel. It is a device that's going to tell you exactly how much energy your appliance is using. And it's so, so helpful in helping to make decisions about what you use and what you don't use in your home or how often you use it. To dovetail off of what Hope was just talking about, mm -hmm. optimize your home energy use during this time of the year. There are some things that we've started using to help lower the, um, the amount of energy we're using with our central air, and it's been really helpful. Well, one of the main things, I think this has been a big game changer Huge. for us this year. We moved our thermostat up to 79 degrees, and I think we had it set around 76 last mm -hmm. year, which actually does feel a little more comfortable in the house than 79, but we compensate by putting some fans on yeah. in the rooms that we're sitting in. And that way you're only using basically one fan at a time. Mm -hmm. You're not having fans on in every room of the house. Fans don't use that much power. The ones that we have on low will use maybe 18 watts mm -hmm. on the low setting. Maybe on the medium or high settings, they'll use as much as 45 watts. That is so much less than what the air conditioner would use if we had it set lower. But statistically, when you use a fan in the room you are sitting, you can raise the central air temperature up to four degrees higher on that thermostat without any lack of comfort. And we can testify to that. Three, three degrees from 76 to 79, and we're still perfectly comfortable, guys, this year in the rooms that we're sitting in because we're using fans. The other thing that you need to do, too, is make sure you close curtains that are on the sun mm -hmm. side of your home so you're not letting in that natural mm -hmm. radiated heat that's coming in from the sun's mm -hmm. rays. When it comes to any appliances which use standby power, all of those items in your house will be using something called Dun, 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 dun. vampire power. I was going to say phantom power. Phantom power. Same it's thing. called phantom power too. Yeah. Like basically anything that sounds scary followed by the word power. Yeah. That That is what that is using. What that means is it's using energy even if it is turned off. Is If it's plugged in, turned off, it is still using energy. And believe it or not, just walking around and unplugging thing can have a huge impact on your energy bill every single month. We have heard from countless viewers who have sent us emails and comments in the comment section and said, I did what you said. It made a huge, huge difference. And along with that phantom power, anything that uses a remote control yep. like this. Like our gonna, camera. <laughs> right. <laughs> and and what we do is we put a lot of these items on power strips. So you yeah. shut the power strip off. Now you've cut power to them. That's a little bit easier than plugging and unplugging the item. We just gave you what? In five minutes, we gave you probably six different ways that you can use less energy, particularly in the summer months but we have literally dozens of different tips that we have employed in order to keep our energy usage low and to lower our bills at the end of every single month. Now, if you want all of our tips and strategies in one handy area where you can access them all at once, I put together a home energy savings guide. It's a bundle of resources and it will help you because everything will be there, it will be handy and you'll know exactly where to grab it. I even created an ebook for summer and an ebook for winter that has all of those tips Tips. In the summer book, it has all the summer tips. And in the winter book, it has all the winter tips. If you want to get your hands on that, there'll be a link to the Home Energy Savings Guide bundle, and it will be in the description of the video. One of the things that people don't realize is that there are top three factors which influence your energy bill at the end of every month. In the top three is heating water. That's one of the top three contributors to your final energy bill at the end of every month. And so when you deliberately save on water, it's like a double blessing, we call it. That means you're not only saving on your water bill, but you're also lowering your energy bill. And there are lots of things you can do to save on water this summer. Let's talk about those. Yeah. Uh, in order to save money on water, uh, you might look at watering your plants early in the morning. Mm -hmm. I mean, real early yep. in the morning. So you're not getting as much evaporation 
region. Where we live, the humidity is higher in the morning and that causes less evaporation. So the water you're putting on the plants is going down into the soil. If you water at midday, a lot of that, maybe 50% of it, is just gonna evaporate off mm -hmm. in the heat of the blazing sun. Yeah. Another thing you can do is put rain barrels on your downspouts mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. collect rainwater. And that can also be used for watering your lawn, washing your car, mm -hmm. any number of outdoor things that you do with water, you can use that for. In fact, any gray water that you collect in your home, uh, water that you might collect in your shower as the water is heating up, you can collect that in a bucket, take it out, water your plants with it. Water that you're running to do dishes with, take it out, water your plants with it. There's lots of sources of gray Gray water in your home. Now, this isn't contaminated water, y'all, so hear what I'm saying. This is gray water that you can take outside and you can water plants with. Hope, let's swing back into the vacation mode a little bit That's... and discuss <laughs> maybe some long vacations. These are vacations where you travel, mm -hmm. you're going to go away for a week, two weeks, maybe even three weeks. And there are some things that you can do to save money on vacations. Larry, you know, I am always ready to swing back up into vacation mode. That's one of my happy things to do is to swing back to vacation mode. You want to look at your accommodations that are available, ways that you're getting from point A to point B, and always be aware that sometimes if you will travel or you will book your accommodations either off season and off season generally for hotels will start at a specific date. It might still be perfectly warm outside, but they are charging you the winter rate instead of the summer rate. So be aware of that. And then you might also want to make sure that you are booking on a weekday instead of a weekend. Weekends are almost always going to cost you more at a hotel or a motel or even an Airbnb than the weekdays are. But sometimes, but the caveat, a lot of Airbnb owners, if you will book for, say, what they call a week-long stay, which may be in, in as few as five days, then they're going to give you a slight break on that cost per night. Our other advice is don't be afraid to ask questions. If someone owns an Airbnb, that's what they're there for, to answer your questions and say, hey, you know, we were thinking of staying three nights, but if we book five nights, you give us a little bit off each night, and sometimes they will do that. One of the other perks that goes along with Airbnbs, mm -hmm. if you have stayed at one previously, mm -hmm. a lot of times the owner will allow you to stay there again at a reduced rate. The one mm -hmm. that we stayed at in the Smoky Mountains, the Shady Rest, that owner would allow us to do a second stay at a very reduced rate. For one, they've got kind of a rapport with you after the mm -hmm. first time, so they can offer that to you at that rate. Shady Rest. We're coming back again. <laughs> yes. We need to rest in the mountains again. <laughs> There's some really good ways to smoke out some of these good deals, and that's with TripAdvisor online. Sometimes TripAdvisor will offer you like a bundle. So if you book your rooms through them and you're also planning to take on some of the local attractions, then you can get a discounted price if you will buy a bundle. We also booked uh, a vacation and we got a really good deal. I mean, like a really good deal on the hotel, like 40% off by booking it through TripAdvisor. But here's the, I always have caveats, I feel like, with everything I tell you. <laughs> Don't assume TripAdvisor is the cheapest cost. Call the hotel and ask. Uh, Larry and our son went on a two-day bonding trip down to Southern Illinois a while back. And I was looking at these very expensive rooms at a golf course. And they did not have a double available. So I called them. I said, you know, my husband, my son, they're looking for this bonding weekend and we're looking online and we, we don't see that you offer any double rooms for the weekend they want. She's like, oh, what weekend? So I told her and she goes, oh, no problem. She goes, you know what? We actually have like a suite available and because you called, I will give you the suite that weekend for the exact same cost. No upgrade cost. We'll give it to the same cost that you found it for online. So call the hotel and see if there aren't some deals available 
that you don't know about. One of the things about summer activities mm -hmm. that can kind of be a little expensive is the gear mm -hmm. that you might need for it. Camping gear, backpacking gear, sleeping bags, tents, whatever it is that you need. But you might consider borrowing these from a family member or a friend. That's how Hope and I went on our honeymoon. We borrowed my mom and dad's car and trailer. So, um, you know, there's different things we kind of have to think outside the box for, I think, as to whether we really need to spend money on something that we're really not going to use that much after that trip. Sometimes the cost of renting those items is also very fair. Yeah. And the thing about this is, is oftentimes we see these sorts of things that require special gear and think, oh, I think we would really enjoy that. This is a great way to try it out, a low cost way to try it out. If your family was like, it's a 10 out of a 10 for all of us, and you want to do it again, then you can start looking to buy that gear. But if you're buying the gear, guys, listen up. You want to buy it at the end of the summer season, not at the beginning of the summer season, because you'll pay full price at the beginning. But if you will wait until around 1st of August, sometimes even the middle of August, so you want to catch it at that sweet spot. So planning ahead really works in their advantage, doesn't it? It does, it does. But the thing is, you'll find that end of the season that you'll pay 50 to 75% less than you would at the beginning of the season. Look for those sales at the end of the season, guys. Saving money, of course, doesn't always just take place in the summer. This should be a year-round <laughs> activity. And if you're interested in learning how you can save money and cut costs and build up that bank account, we have a video right over there you can watch. To unwind while exploring some great things, with, which are in a day's drive of where... I'm going to try it one more time. <laughs> 